Hello, I'm Tom Broderick, Mayor of the City of Anderson, and with me today is our Water Superintendent, Neil McKee. Neil, how are you doing today? Good morning, Mayor. Good morning to you, too. Uh, this is a rainy, uh, rainy day here in Anderson, and we're inside the uh, water plant that we're getting ready to tear down, right? Yes. Uh, what I want to do, Neil, is, is explain to the folks at home uh, what your role is, uh, maybe a little bit about your history. Um, I know when I first came into office, we didn't have a full-time water superintendent. I know you were working uh, part-time from time to time to help out the city, uh, but we reached out to you and you were kind enough to agree to come on full-time, and I think that's very important that you've done that. But Mike, explain a little bit about that background and history for yourself and what you've done and then what you're doing today. All right, sure. Um, I started my career uh, in drinking water um, 30 years ago, a little over 30 years ago. Uh, it was a choice I made when I enlisted into the Air Force. Um, they had a, a job description for environmental support, which happened to be water and wastewater. Um, so um, I went into that field and have never, never done anything different uh, since that day. I uh, worked for a couple different utilities, privately owned uh, utilities, municipals. Um, this is really my first go around with the municipal uh, utility uh, full time. And so, um, you know, I've spent most of my life in drinking water and, and public health. So. Now, Anderson, uh, we have two, two facilities that, that are water plants, right? Yes. Explain, explain to the folks back home again that may or may not understand totally where we actually get our water. We are a groundwater source. Uh, we have one uh, plant, uh, our Wheeler plant is, uh, is downtown uh, Anderson. Uh, this plant is on the north side of the, of the, of the city uh, in Lafayette Township. And um, the downtown plant is also uh, groundwater under the influence of surface water, which just basically means uh, that there is some influence from the river to, into our groundwater. Uh, we treat the water that way. Uh, but it's basically a, a large groundwater plant uh, that they've designated as having some influence from, from, from surface water. Out here in Lafayette Township, the Lafayette plant is uh, all groundwater, and so the source is, is the deep water wells. Now, obviously, the, the Wheeler plant's very old. We were talking about it a few minutes ago, trying to figure out about how old it is, and you were explaining to me that the, the plant originally um, actually took water from the, the river back in the early days of the city, is that right? Yes, yes, back in the early 1900s it was uh, complete surface water uh, and the source was, uh, was, the, was the river. Um, over the years uh, they, they went away from that, uh, began to drill wells, uh, find, finding well water uh, you know, around the city um, and then converted that to uh, groundwater. And we think that that plant, uh, maybe early 1900s originally, and it's been updated a little bit, but not too updated, right? right? right. It's, what, like 30s, 40s, maybe? Yes, yes. And so, we're talking 1930s or right. 40s. <laughs> um, and then this plant that we're setting in here, which is again up north, um, you said 1968? 1968, uh, it was built in 1968, and we'll talk more about it, but um, if, if, um, if you, as someone that knows, uh, knows a little bit about the uh, you know, water plants, this, this one was actually had some, some pretty good uh, high-tech equipment at the time, uh, you know, of course, things have changed since then, but um, uh, it's, yeah, it's been a very good uh, a plant for and has served the, the city well uh, for many years. Now, our plants, uh, this one here, uh, which we call Lafayette, and then the Wheeler plant, how would you describe the percentage of water that comes from either plant as it feeds into the city for our city customers? Okay, well, as the years gone by, the, the Lafayette plant was, was uh, utilized probably, it's probably a 50 50 uh, split early on. Um, as the off-layer plant started uh, having some issues, um, just like anything else, uh, you know, that you that you purchase or or, uh, or homes, uh, you know, it has a useful life. And so, uh, as it got went down the road and started getting um, some issues with it, uh, it kind of changed to 60/40. Uh, the Wheeler plant was was the workhorse for the city, and has been for you know probably the last I'd say 15 years. Uh, and so uh, it's about a 60-40 split uh, between the and here. Now this, the, uh, this plant here, right now, in terms of uh, gallons of water per day, before we convert it over to the new plant, the old plant, when we're setting it, uh, about how many gallons a day would it produce? Uh, we were doing about four and a half million a day from uh, this plant we're sitting in today. Okay. Um, so that was, a, like I said, that was about a 40% of the supply. And our plant, our new plant that we have, once it gets up to full capacity, you're figuring that's going to produce about how much a day? Uh, full capacity is about 10 million gallons a day, which is actually pretty close to our average daily. So for the entire city, for the entire city. Yes. <laughs> yes so, um, 
So it'll be, um, you know, we'll pr it'll probably be switched. Uh, as I said before, it was about 60-40. Uh, with Wheeler being the 60, uh, we'll probably switch that around now that we've got the new plant. It'll be a 60% probably from here in 40. Now, the, the plant we're setting in, this plant, the, the way the water is acquired and then treated, explain that versus how it's going to be with the new plant. Um, okay, so um, it's still well water, so uh, the water will come into the plant. It, well, how it used to be is the water came into the plant. Uh, we aerated, uh, forced air aeration, which oxidizes iron and manganese. It's still an iron and manganese removal plant, and so it would come into the basement here uh, into a, a what's called a contact tank. From the contact tank, the, the high source pumps would lift it out of there and then push it through the filters uh, into the distribution system. Um, pretty costly on, on, a, on a, when you look at it electrically because you know the motors are, are you know working pretty hard to get it through the filters. Water quality, of course, very very important today. That that in every community that we have not only plenty of water but we want good quality water. Uh, you, like you said, I know you've had a lot of experiences in different, uh, different uh, parts of the industry. Uh, so tell us a little bit about uh, the quality of water of Anderson and, and your take on that based upon your experience and knowledge of the, the chemistry. Yeah, Anderson's water is terrific. Um, it's, it's probably one of the, the best tasting <laughs> and aesthetically the, uh, some of the best that, I, that I've seen. Um, and that starts with, with uh, you know, a good source of supply. Um, it, also, it also has a lot to do with who your operators are and how they operate the plant. And we have a top-notch staff here. Uh, our, our production supervisor is, is on top of everything, and we take it very seriously. Uh, and I know that you do as well. Uh, you know, public health and, uh, and providing safe, clean, affordable water. You know, for the citizens. And so, um, the, the source of the water is, is very good to start with. Um, and then we have good treatment, and we have good people doing the work uh, that, that stay on top of. We do a lot of testing uh, every day for process control. And so that, that kind of guides us in how we need to, to make adjustments at the plant uh, yeah. to make good clean water. Yeah, a lot of people probably don't realize that, that we actually test just on a, a constant basis, constant, really. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and you have, when you speak about operators, tell a little bit about what operators do. Yeah, so um, we are required to have certified operators through the state of Indiana, uh, Department of Environmental Management. Uh, and actually, it comes down from EPA, so it's a, it's a federal um, uh, requirement as well. Um, but we have uh, around-the-clock operators. Uh, they, they are at our, our Wheeler plant. Uh, we have three shifts there. Uh, we also have utility people that do the day shift uh, work here at, at Lafayette. Uh, and so, um, you know, they're highly trained, certified, um, and, and understand, you know, water chemistry and, and how, to, how to make the adjustments on chemicals uh, and how to treat uh, the water. I know one of the nice things about the new plant, we can look at that here in a few minutes, but uh, is your lab. And I know the guys that work in the lab are excited about it because it, it's really, like you said, super high tech. Yes, yes, top notch, um, you know, and, and the equipment that we, that we use uh, is very top notch. And so, um, and, and they are well versed in how to use that equipment. Uh, like I said, to be able to uh, come in in the morning, grab samples, uh, do the testing for process control, uh, you know, then they can make adjustments uh, to the plant. Uh, from, the, from the information that we get from, from the testing. So, and I just also want to add that um, we are required to do uh, several compliance sampling uh, uh, things that go uh, to, to the state uh, so that uh, we are in compliance with, with all federal uh, state regulations for, for drinking water. So. Now, even though you've talked about our, our, our capacity and, and great quality of water, uh, we're constantly looking for uh, new ways to make sure that we have that water well into the future, long after we're all long gone. So tell us a little bit about what's been going on that front. Yes. Um, so when we, uh, when, when the city, uh, you know, knew that they had to replace the Lafayette plant, uh, they also wanted to look at the source of supply and make sure that we had an adequate source of supply. And so with that, there was two uh, wells redrilled uh, because in, uh, you know, we talked about the infrastructure being aging and, and being replaced. The wells are no different. Uh, they, they were built back in, you know, uh, same time, about in, in the early 60s. And so uh, a lot of those are past their useful life. And so we did uh, redrill two of those wells uh, when we built the plant. Um, but as, as you say, Mayor, you know, you, you have to kind of always be staying ahead of that. You don't want to be falling behind and, uh, and trying to figure out how you're going to have a source of supply. You'd rather be out in the future, out in front of it, and know, um, doing some test drilling and knowing that uh, as, as, as the city grows, you know, as we get new customers, we get new industrial customers, and you know, 
like we've been getting a lot of, um, you know, that we're able to supply the, the plant and supply those customers. Yeah. Now the the uh, four and a half million or so you pump we're pumping previously. Uh, once this new drilling gets done, that would increase the amount available to the plant across the street or across the alley here, where we're going to go in a few minutes. The new plant, right? Yes. Yes, it will actually add probably another two and a half million a day uh, capacity to this plant. So um, it'll it'll max our capacity. Be able to max. We'll be able to max our capacity uh, coming out of the new plant uh, with those new additional wells. Now, uh, some people back home, depending on where they live, might have experienced when this new plant has actually been up and started being operational towards the end of December, first part of January. Is that yes. fair to say? Yes. And um, you, you've been working to, to bring it on fully. And in the meantime, some folks have noticed some you know, brown water and so forth. Explain why that happens and what we do to correct that and what we're going to do to make sure that goes away here in the next few weeks. Sure. Um, again, uh, like I said in the beginning, it was, uh, this plant is an iron and manganese removal plant. Um, you know, I've opened five plants in my career. Um, this is, it's very normal to, to have a breaking in period of those new filters. Um, if you have a swimming pool, it'd be something similar to that where, you know, you start up your, your pool and you start seeing, you know, kind of dirty water come through. Uh, it's because the, the filter needs to be seeded, so it needs to, to actually get dirtier uh, for it to be able to, to remove everything more efficiently. Um, we also, because we have iron and manganese, we need to treat for it. Um, one of the things you have to do is, is, um, is pre-chlorinate. Uh, we're required to have disinfection, but chlorine is an oxidizer, so um, we use that to treat, uh, to make the, the iron and manganese larger, and, and you know, because it comes in very small. When it gets oxidized, it gets bigger, and so it, it catches in the filter better. Um, so there's a process, a slow process, uh, for getting that dialed in. And so, yeah, that's why, you know, some of the customers in the north end of the town, uh, most of the north end, uh, would see some dirty water on an on occasional basis. Uh, if they're living on dead ends of the water mains, they may see it more often. Uh, but um, we, we're getting that dialed in. Again, it's a slow process. That's why they may also uh, have some smell or taste of, of bleach uh, because we're using uh, chlorine as a, as a uh, disinfectant. Uh, and, and treatment for the iron and manganese. And we've talked about it before. Once that does get dialed in, then, then all that will go away and it'll be yes. returned to the, what they're used to seeing and smelling and drinking in the, yes. in, in the past. Now, I know we talked earlier, uh, you might want to explain us a little bit about uh, what we're going to do as regards to the fire hydrants here in the near future, why we're going to do that, and what they might expect for a brief period of time. Sure. Um, annually, we do a, a, a flushing of our, of our distribution system for two reasons. Um, we want to clean up and scour the mains uh, that are underground uh, that can cause riled water when we, when we have shutdown, when we fix water main breaks, those kind of things. And so uh, it's just general maintenance of our, of our distribution system. Um, and also make sure that the fire hydrants are all operating uh, correctly because we want to make sure that if the fire department goes out to fire, fire at someone's house, uh, they can feel confident that they're going to have uh, you know, good water pressure and they're going to have good flow. And so we'll begin that uh, in, probably in May sometime. It's about an eight-week process. Um, we start from the source, and so we run through the city. Um, so, so customers uh, will, I had never say may, because I know they will, uh, experience uh, you know, seeing some dirty water. Um, when we do that, um, if they flush their cold water side for two to three minutes, it usually clears up. If it doesn't clear up, we ask that they give us a call so we can come and, and help get that cleared up again. Okay. And before we actually do that, uh, like I said, it'll be sometime in uh, mid-May or so, when we do do that, uh, there'll be notices and advertisement both on our Facebook, social media, also in the Anderson newspaper, yes. uh, and let folks know as much warning as we possibly can that that's going to happen. That way they might want to not wash their clothes that day until right. they ran their water faucet to make sure it's clear and all that. Is that right? Okay. Now, one last thing I want to ask about before we sort of take a tour of the plant and so forth. Uh, is some folks probably are interested in, in the, in the uh, water tires and, and what they do, what they serve. And maybe you might talk a little bit about some of the repairs we had to make on a couple of them here in the last couple of years or so. Sure. Well, the tires, uh, same thing as we talked about uh, on the aging infrastructure. Um, you know, some of those tires are, 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 have been around for a long time. And so um, the function that they have is, is for uh, storage, number one, and for fire protection. Um, you know, we're required to have, a, you know, a day storage, um, you know, uh, as an average day storage, um, through the I requires us to have that. Um, you know, so that if we had issues, we, we would have enough in the air that we could uh, get things taken care of before you know, we ran out of water. So, um, 
you know, those are the two things that the, the tires are used for. Um, yeah, some of them are, are a little older, so they, it's time to, to do some work on them. Um, they do, IDEM does require inspections of those tires uh, on an annual basis, which we do, uh, do that every, every year. Uh, and so they'll, they'll, uh, they'll come in, they'll look at the towers, they'll climb them, they'll drain them, look inside, make sure that the, uh, it's not getting too crazy with corrosion. Uh, and then if there are issues, they'll make repairs on those at that time. So. I know we had, uh, when we first started, you and I started pretty much the same time frame, uh, that uh, the Fairview Tower was not operational, really. And we did some things to fix it up, so it, it's fully operational now? Yes. Yes, um, hydraulically some of those towers were set, uh, and they were put in a long time ago, but they worked at the time, uh, but as the city got, got larger and, and uh, you know, they changes things hydraulically, sometimes uh, those towers, the water doesn't move out of them like they should. And so, um, you know, that was something that we recognized uh, early on when we first, when we first got here. Um, and so, um, you know, getting water out to the flagship area was, was, was crucial, I think, for us. And so, um, you know, we built a booster station there at the, at the Fairview tank so that we could move. We had a million gallons of water in the air that was basically not being used. And so we, we pumped from the Fairview tank and actually pumped that out uh, to the Park Road tank in flagship there. And we fill that tire with the water that's, that's uh, at Fairview. Net. And final, one final thing on tanks. Uh, people may have noticed from time to time that uh, they get repainted. I know we just had one repainted out off of... Uh, uh, 8th Street, explain how that works and uh, how often that might occur. Yeah, so that's quite a process too. Um, you know, they have to drain the tower and then um, they, they go in and, and make sure that, uh, like I said, all the corrosion, all the wells are good, uh, and then make the repairs that need to be made. Um, and then um, they go in and, and sandblast it and then, um, and then repaint it. So um, all that takes, you know, upwards of four weeks. To get that all done. And that's and that's a requirement. That's yes. we just don't do that to make things look right, pretty, right? right? Exactly. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now, also in addition to the two uh, wells that you uh, redrilled and get ready to try to put those in production, you've also been doing a hydrological study on the south side to try to find some additional wells too. Is that right? Yes. Just like we talked about earlier, you never want to be caught behind uh, on your source of supply because you can have a, a plant that you. Um, that's capable of doing 10, 10 million a day, but if you don't have a source of supply that can give you 10 million, then, um, then you know it doesn't do you any good. So um, you always want to be out in front of that. Uh, something that we've done is, is to um, is start the process of looking around the city uh, for a future source of supply, and that is in the south end of town. Um, so we're in the process of doing some test drilling in, in those areas, uh, and then you know the, the next step of that would be to, to look at a production well to see you know, how much we can actually get and if it can supply uh, future needs. And we've talked about this, and it's obviously several years into the future, but the reality is Wheeler Plant is extremely old. Yes. Uh, and while it does a great job it, it, for what it has, uh, it really needs to be replaced down the road. And, and if we find the, the right kind of well fields in the south, then, then we can look at relocating there because we have so much uh, use on that, that part of town. Yes, exactly. I mean, that's uh, the south end is, is, is another focal point. Uh, you might, I know you talked about some of the business out there. One of our largest businesses, Nestle, is one of our biggest customers, right? Yes. Water customer. So uh, it, it's obviously critical. I know as people come in from economic development purposes, they're interested in our water, and I know they always are very happy to hear the quality and, and the hard work that you guys do. And I, again, I just want to thank you and, and a tremendous staff of hard workers here in the city that we've had so, for, for so many years. Yeah, yeah, I really have to give them the credit. They're the ones that every day, you know, um, go out and, and take the samples and, and make the process control um, you know, adjustments and, uh, and provide the, the clean water for us and the safe water for us on a daily basis. So. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll go in here and take a peek at some of the uh, older equipment and then I think people will <laughs> probably really understand and see uh, why we're making this change. Right. And then also, we're, this is going to be torn down next week. Yes, yes, it will be torn down next week. Now, the, the infrastructure we see in here, some of the pumps and so forth, those, some of that stuff's going to be recycled, possibly resold, and used for other purposes, right? Yes. Okay, very good. Well, thank you again, Neil. All right. Thank you. Okay, Neil, so we've come back into the inside of the plant. And again, for folks back home, I should understand this is the old plant, not the new plant. Yes. No one might think we did the retro decoration. <laughs> uh, in fact, this looks like something that could have come out of the uh, you know, 1950s, uh, go to the 
to the moon and Mars or somewhere. Mm -hmm. Tell us about what this is. Okay, so we're standing in front of what's called a backwash control panel. And so all of our filters, uh, as they as they go through a weekly uh, filtering, uh, can can build up the iron manganese that's going to get caught inside the filter. And so uh, on a regular basis, about every 48 hours, um, we do what's called a backwash. And so um, you go through and you reverse the flow. The water comes in the bottom, so then going through the top. Uh, expands the bed, removes the, the particulate iron manganese that's in there. And then we backwash it into the tank and we send that to the wastewater plant. And so this was a, uh, a backwash control panel that had to come in manually, turn all these knobs to get each valve in the right position, uh, watch it, and you had a timer uh, because you know you don't want to you don't want to get uh, again as I talked about before you don't want to get it too clean because uh, you know the, the actually a little bit of dirt in your filter helps catch most of that uh, iron manganese. So there's a, a pipe here that's uh, corroded. Yes, tell us a little bit about that. Right, so you, you know you, you can come in and look at this plant, and, and someone that, that doesn't know can come in and look at it and say, ah, you know, it doesn't look all that bad, you know, it doesn't look all that like, it, like it's that in disrepair. Um, but you know, when we do a, a cut out of the piping, you can see some of the internal uh, piping. You can see that uh, that the corrosion uh, takes its toll, you know, over the years. And so you see a lot of that. That's what you deal with. And if, and if you can't see behind us a little bit, you can probably see a few uh, repair clamps that are on these uh, pipes here. And you can see corrosion at the, at the welds. Uh, and so you can only repair those so many times uh, before there just isn't enough metal there to actually do any kind of repair at all. And so that's what we were getting uh, with this plant. That's why uh, that's why we went to, to build new plants. Okay. And again, a little bit, I think they're shooting, they've already shot it, where it shows the clamps where Again, you just have, you have leakage and all sorts right. of problems. Yeah. And we were talking earlier, yeah, thank you, Sam, to take a picture of that now. The, the uh, I know you were talking earlier about a couple of the pipes that were so brittle that even the, back when they were running, if you went up and tapped on it too hard, you know, busted it open or something. Right, yes. Uh, the metal just gets thin, and, and so uh, over the years, you just get enough corrosion in there, there's enough uh, uh, water you know, scouring through it on a daily basis that it just thins the metal out. Uh, and so to the point where you just can't make a repair, uh, you can't weld a repair, uh, plus the fact of being able to shut it down. You know, we try very hard uh, to keep everyone in water at all times. It's, it's not 100% able to do that all the time, uh, but you certainly don't want uh, to get to the point where you're constantly shutting it down uh, and people don't have water, or you're shutting it down and it's getting dirty water because you start back up, those kind of things. So uh, it just it gets to the point where you need to, to move on and, and uh, build something new. And from a recycle standpoint, uh, the pumps that are beside us here, there are several. Uh, those are the pumps that actually brought the water up from below originally okay. and then pumped the system for the filters and so forth. So what's the plans for these pumps? Okay, so um, a few of them are, are near the same model, uh, near enough to the same model as, as we have at the Wheeler plant. So we'll be able to reutilize those, uh, those motors and pumps uh, down there. The ones that we can't, um, we will uh, reach out to other utilities, neighboring utilities that, that have uh, plants that are aging as well. Uh, because they're just trying to get by long enough to, to so they can get a new plant. Uh, and so uh, we'll be able to hopefully uh, you know, sell those to, uh, to another utility that needs them. Across the street from the old plant, there's another structure. It looks like it's made out of uh, a lot of concrete, cement, and so forth. Explain what that is. Okay. Those are the aeration towers. Uh, like we talked about earlier on in this plant, uh, it was all at ground level. Uh, and so it was kind of inefficient. The water would come into the, and the aerators are on the ground, on the ground floor. Uh, and do the same thing. It would get forced air into it, but then it would drop into the into the uh, basement here, and then be lifted by the high service pumps. At the new plant, the water will actually go into the towers, uh, and then we have uh, aeration on top of those towers. It does the same same job. It aerates the water, uh, oxidizes the iron and manganese, but it will gravity flow through the plant, uh, the new plant. Right. I'll tell you what, we'll do a little bit more looking around here and then we'll shoot on the new plant and check it out. Alright, sounds good. Tell us what this is all about and what happens here. Right, so this panel is uh, in case we ever need to do it manually. Uh, we talked about it in the old plant, that large uh, panel we stood in front of was backwash control panel. This is backwash control panel for the, the new filters here. As you can see, it's a lot smaller. Uh, you know, there's a lot of other 
things on here that they give us uh, information as far as how much water we have in the clear well uh, to actually do backwash, the levels in the aeration tanks that we talked about uh, earlier. And so uh, if we were to not be able to operate by supervisory control, which we do now uh, uh, with a computer, uh, the guys could come here, operators could come here and actually manually do everything. Now we talked a while ago on the way over, uh, we want to make sure you were concerned, you want to make sure everyone understands that we were talking about the quality of water and how, how good it is in Anderson. You know, obviously we talked a little bit about what happens when things get moved around and you pick up some of the, you know, some of the dirt stuff that comes through your faucets from time to time. Tell us about the quality of that water when it comes to safety. Right. So, yeah, I want to reiterate uh, to, you know, to our customers and our citizens of Anderson that um, it's purely aesthetic is what you're seeing. You know, it's, it, it's iron and manganese. If you lived out in the country and you had a well that didn't, you didn't have a water softener on it, you would see that on a regular basis. Um, same thing, uh, you know, if it passes through these filters and gets into the distribution system, uh, you may see that from time to time. And with the new plant, uh, breaking these filters in, that's what's happening now. I uh, want to make sure that everyone knows that the water is safe to drink. We continue to do all the, the compliance sampling and testing that's required of us. Uh, we actually do daily testing for process control like we talked about. And so um, we know that the water is safe to drink. Uh, I understand that you see it, it comes out dirty and you immediately get a little bit worried about it. By all means, please call us at the water department. Uh, we have no problem coming out and, and helping out and, and, and explaining things to you. Uh, and, and, and making sure that you can also clear those filters out of neighborhoods, especially, like yes. you said, somebody on a dead end or something like that. Right. We can, there's some things we can do to, to, to make it better uh, until we get through this process of, of, of uh, you know, dialing this plant in. So. Now, we talked earlier, too, about the, the team you have and you know, how proud you are of them, and we all are because everybody does work really hard. Uh, give us a little understanding of, of the amount of folks that work here. I know you said you work three shifts. Right. So how many uh, people are actually employed with the water department? Okay, we have 32 employees currently. Uh, we have a distribution center that, that the bulk of those, those employees are at that, that, do the, that fix the water main leaks, put in new services, that kind of thing, uh, on a daily basis, do meter service. Um, and then we have the operators downtown. We have a, a round-the-clock operations. Uh, we have an operator on each shift, eight, uh, three eight-hour shifts. And then we have utility personnel that, that also um, you know, fill in for those operators and then do the daily maintenance of the plants. So like you said, obviously it's not just running the plant, but it's also getting the distribution out there, but also as new customer comes online, they need something hooked up or you're installing new, new water lines or at the same time repairing old ones. Uh, this is something that these guys do really around the clock. Right, on a daily basis, yes. Well, again, congratulations. You guys have done a great job, and, and I know uh, you have oversaw the, the complete building of this plant. Uh, yourself and the rest of your staff, you guys have done a great job, and uh, we'll have a few more uh, footage uh, shots here of, of the plant, but we look forward to getting the other one down, getting this up fully done, and everybody back to work, and everybody's water running nice, clean, and clear, and great quality drinking water at all times. Absolutely. Neil, thank, thank you again so very much, buddy. Thank you. All right. In this particular system, you can get it, uh, drill it down really tight with regards to customers and uses and needs. Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, you can use it for a multitude of things, even beyond what you're doing right now. Right, right. So we can see the trends of, of water usage and, and how it's uh, affecting us on a daily basis, um, and we can make adjustments on how we operate the plant based on that those trends. And so uh, it also, like I said, it's data acquisition, so it takes in a lot of data, and we can review that and, and make uh, optimize our, our, our pumping. So. Okay. Well, thank you again. And again, we look forward to the continuing great operation. Thank you.